Hi, welcome to Semiconductor Geopolitics Taiwan's View. This is the first episode of our Cross Strait series, and I'm talking about the Taiwan Strait. Within this series, we'll focus on semiconductor industry in both Taiwan and China. The powerful actor hidden in this scene is, of course, the United States, or the Biden administration to be precise. TSMC's decision to set up a wafer fab in Phoenix, Arizona was something that attracted global attention. This construction project is still ongoing as we are filming this episode. And TSMC's fab in Arizona, which is also called Fab 21, has not yet been completed. In this episode, we'll try to give a broader picture of this story and answer one question. What is TSMC's decision-making process behind all this? In 2020, the U.S. had its big election year, with Trump and Biden running for president. They were ongoing head-to-head in a fierce competition. On May 15, 2020, TSMC dropped a press release announcing its intention to build and operate an advanced foundry in the U.S. with the mutual understanding and the commitment to support from the U.S. federal government and the state of Arizona. And construction is planned to start in 2021, with production targeted to begin in 2024. TSMC's total spending on this project, including capital expenditure, will be approximately 12 billion US dollars from 2021 to 2029. This facility, which will be built in Arizona, will utilize TSMC's 5 nanometer technology for semiconductor wafer fabrication, have a 20,000 semiconductor wafer per month capacity. So my personal opinion definitely TSMC, they, they did not want to go initially, but due to certain reason, they have to go to support the government's direction, both U.S. and Taiwan government. It definitely is a political pressure. Uh, I still remember that when uh, there's an assistant secretary of commerce visit Taiwan, I mean, it's quite a big high-level officials. He is not meeting with, uh, he met with the government officials, but he went straight away to Xinzhu to meet with uh, Morris Chang. Bizo 原先我们并没有看得那么的不好因为不管怎么样就是说台积电it's it's not something uh, whether TSM, TSMC will want to do. Okay, it is something that TS, TSMC must do to separate uh, their manufacturing uh, from Taiwan to other places in the world. Not only for safety reason, not only for geopolitics reason, but only of, but also for supply chain protection reason. This therefore, uh, this is something that we will see that will happen. I don't think that's quite the case, you know, given that, uh, okay, if the U.S. government uh, is trying to bully the TSMC or the Taiwanese government, what leverage does the U.S. government have, right? For TSMC, the TSMC是用美国的用材料的一些生产工具,那这些东西呢,都是美国的智慧产权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权权
announced that it would ban overseas foundries using U.S. equipment to accept commissions from the Chinese communications giant Huawei to produce chips. Well, TSMC is one of those wafer fabs, and the largest one that uses U.S. equipment. This is a further increased penalty after BIS sanctions on Huawei technologies and its 114 subsidiaries, restricting the export of U.S. goods to Huawei a year ago. At that time, Huawei was the second largest customer of TSMC, only after Apple, accounting for about 15% of TSMC's annual revenue. This matter may not be directly related to TSMC's intention to invest in the U.S., but to an extent, one may say this is definitely some kind of pressure. TSMC and Taiwan government, I think governments from Japan, from South Korea, and from the Netherlands, they would feel the same pressure as well. So because of Secretary Raimondo, her remarks demonstrate U.S. position very clearly that U.S. need to strive for a self-sufficient chip cluster. However, it remains very, very challenging for the United States to achieve this goal. Even Biden gets reelected for another four years. <laughs> so Uncle Sam offers not only the stick, but the carrot also. I think really what happened here is that the U.S. government tried to offer subsidies to induce TSNC to go to the U.S., right? The so-called subsidy is stipulated in the U.S. Chips and Science Act, which is of great importance in attracting semiconductor manufacturers to return to the United States. CHIPS in the CHIPS Act stands for Creating Health for Incentives for Production of Semiconductors. According to the Act, the U.S. government will give semiconductor businesses, including TSMC, subsidies if they invest in U.S. soil. The total subsidy budget prepared was 39 billion U.S. dollars out of the budget of the whole act, 52.7 billion U.S. dollars. Chips and Science Act was signed by President Biden on August 9, 2022, and by March of 2024, the boosts haven't dropped yet. During this period of time, TSMC's fab in Kumamoto was already completed with good subsidy from the Japanese government. Finally, on April 8, 2024, as we were producing this series, TSMC Arizona and the U.S. Department of Commerce announced a deal of up to $6.6 billion in proposed CHIPS Act direct funding and the TSMC plans third leading edge fab in Phoenix. Okay, many people aren't aware that the Arizona fab is not TSMC's first overseas investment plan. In fact, TSMC tried to step out of Taiwan before even without subsidies. Really? Why? And where did TSMC go? Now,因为这个美国人嘛,他那时候可能也比较积极的,所以说,哎,他有地震问题啊,还客户要求啊,所以我们为什么不去到美国? So going, going overseas to production, even though for Taiwan, uh, we are really in reluctant to do it because we've never been very good at the overseas production. There's no reason we want to go, but we had to deal with the risk management. Actually, in 1999, September 21st, there was an earthquake in Nantou in Taiwan. I still remember uh, many of my customers come to Taiwan ask us to spread our production site. And that's part of the reason we actually have a fab in Washington State called WaferTech. We have a fab in Singapore called SSMC. We have a fab in Songjiang in China. In 2016, TSMC exported the most advanced process technology, 16 nanometers, developed in Taiwan to Nanjing. This showed TSMC was very optimistic about China's chip market, 
which was proved to be very correct because this 516 is still making good profit right now. 516 in Nanjing building 2016 with 16 nanometer process technology was also one of TSMC's overseas ventures. When it was founded, 16 nanometer was the most advanced process technology that TSMC possessed. It is now, of course, restricted by BIS regulations and only producing 28 nanometer chips. It seems that both political and commercial considerations have an impact on TSMC's decision of building foundry in Arizona. But which weighs more? As I mentioned earlier, in democratic nations, states are not all powerful. They are very powerful, but ultimately they cannot just command firms to do X or Y you know, or Z. So in that regard, I think what's more important is to look at how TSMC's business partners, such as Apple, you know, how they have really pushed TSMC to diversify. So I think this is probably a much more important and relevant story to explain uh, TSMC's moving of its operation, one of its operations, mm. to Arizona. Mm. Unfortunately, in 2023, while TSMC's Arizona Fab 21 was actively in construction, we kept hearing that its progress was impeded. Finally, on July 20, 2023, TSMC Chairman Mark Liu announced at the corporate briefing that the first phase of mass production of the 4 nanometer process at the Arizona Fab would be postponed from 2024 to 2025. The reason is lack of skilled installation workers. Six months later, on January 18, 2024, TSMC Chairman Mark Liu revealed again at a corporate briefing that the mass production time of TSMC's second phase of Fab 21 in Arizona using 3 nanometer technology will be postponed from the original scheduled 2026 to at least 2027 or even 2028. What we've just shown you was the trajectory of TSMC's investment and the construction in Arizona. Oh, by the way, the speech we just saw from TSMC Chairman Mark Liu was the last time he hosted a corporate briefing. Earlier on December 9, 2023, TSMC announced that Mark Liu would retire after the shareholders meeting in July 2024. What is certain is that TSMC's new board of directors will continue to complete the construction of the Arizona Fab. However, the real challenge only starts until the Fab is completed. After all, a company's goal is to increase revenue and profits for their shareholders. Where will the orders of Fab 21 come from? Can the chips it produces be as cost efficient as those made in Taiwan? These are all still undecided. If you enjoyed this episode or you are interested in knowing more information behind the story, I highly recommend you to watch our next episode, How U.S. Building Supply Chain Shakes Global Chip Industry. This is our first episode of Cross3 series. See you next time.